Hi, I'm Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe, and I'm really excited to share this tutorial with you. Um, how to mask impossible images. This is a tutorial I've been doing for quite a while, and this is a technique that I've been developing over the years that enables you to cut out a very difficult photograph. Anyone can cut out a photo from a black background or a solid white background. But here we're going to actually look at a photograph that's very difficult. This girl's got hair, she's got feathers, we've got a multicolored background. And I'm sure going to show you right now how to cleanly extract that. Now I have a written tutorial on Photoshop Cafe, so have a look at the link below and you can actually go and follow along with the step-by-step -step tutorial. And also this is off my video, Photoshop CC for Digital Photographers. So I really think you're going to find this useful. I'm now going to show you what I like to call masking impossible images. So it's one thing to mask out something that's shot against a white or a black background. But what about something like this? We've got these feathers here against a very similar color background. Plus we've got a split colored background here. So we've got one color on one side. We've got pink on the other side. We've got the same pink in the lips, the feathers. We've got little holes in here of the feathers. So I think anyone could agree this is definitely a very difficult image to mask out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my process for masking these types of images that are much more difficult. So let's jump into this and uh, the tool we're going to start with is actually using the color range. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up under here and I'm going to choose select color range. So here's our color range. Now there's a lot of different things we can do on here. We can choose to look at the image or the selection on here. But what I'm going to do is rather than go into all these options, I'm just going to do the entire workflow and you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go in and obviously it's easier to select the background than it is to select the foreground. So here's a little secret I'm going to let you in on. When it comes to selections, everybody seems to think you have to try to get it all in one hit. And you don't. We can actually do this in two goes. And what we're going to do is we're going to get all the pink stuff on one go. And then we're going to have a second round where we're going to get the other colors. And that way you're breaking it down into more bite-sized pieces. As they say, you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? I'm not saying we should be eating elephants, but, you know, it's just an idiom. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the pink here. And then when I select on the pink, you can see right now that we've got a little bit of it selected. So I can play around with the fuzziness and this will actually enable me to go and select more of it. So here's the thing about the fuzziness. What the fuzziness does is it just changes the sensitivity. So what I'm looking for is not this. When everything starts to get grayed out, gray is not good. Solid black means that that's going to be unselected. Solid white means it's going to be selected. When we've got little speckles in there, we have a problem. But we can fix those. So what I'm looking for right now is just something that's going to give me a pretty good overall kind of a selection around here. So I'm looking for a nice average there. And that's pretty close right there. So we've got some stuff we're going to have to clean up. But that's okay. So sometimes what you can do is you can hit the little plus key here too. And you can select there to increase that selection. And then what we're going to do at this point is just bring the fuzziness down a little bit. Now that we've just, um, you know, sampled more than one color. Because notice that pink is a little darker here than it is there. So we've kind of got it a little better. Notice the lips and everything are in there, but no problem. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to click OK. And now we've got the sample. So this is where um, I like to use the quick mask. So if we go down to the quick mask tool, which is down at the bottom here in the toolbar, or just hit the Q key. We can toggle backwards and forwards between a mask and a selection. Now, if you want to see what this looks like, I can show you two things. One, because it's it's by default, it's red. But when you look into the channels, when we turn on and off the quick mask, you'll see that the channel will, it'll toggle between a selection and then create a channel. And that channel enables us to have that selection saved where we can actually paint on it. Now, we are going to be doing that. I'm going to click on RGB, go back to the layer. And we want to paint on the mask, but it's a little hard to see what should be selected and what shouldn't because the default rubolith or red color kind of clashes a little bit with some of the colors we're trying to select. So if we double click here on the quick mask, we can go into the options. I'm clicking on that red and I'm going to change it to something like yellow. And the opacity, we can increase the opacity. I'm going to bring it up to about 80 and then click OK. Now you can see it's a lot easier to see what we're working with.
So now I'm going to click a brush. Now, don't worry about these colors. It has nothing to do with this yellow. The yellow is just a preview. But if I paint with black, it will paint out of that mask. It will add to the masking selection. If I paint with white, it will cut that out. So that's how I can work with the mask. So there's certain areas up here that we just want to kind of clean up a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the black. And, uh, you know, I know that if I paint this out, I can clean this up a little bit. But that's a little laborious. I'm going to show you a quicker way of doing that. We're going to go into the channels. Turn off the other channels there just by clicking on RGB. Now we go to the back. Now we can clearly see what we've got. So I can paint with this black and just kind of fill some of these very, very solid edges in, and I can see easily what's going on now. So what we're looking for is a nice clean mask here, black and white. Now there's little speckles here in the white and there's little speckles in the black. Let me show you how to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to choke this mask. So I'm going to hit Control L for levels and that would be Command L on Mac. And if you notice on this, we've got pixels here in the black and pixels in the white. So if we go this way, we can actually clean up that black. So I'm just cleaning up some of those little speckles in there. And if you go all the way here, notice you can completely plug it up. But it's also kind of damaging that. So I'm just going to take it back, maybe go in just a little bit, but not too much on that one. Just past that little mountain. We can do some more handwork if we need to. Now this white here, if we pull this in, this will clean up the white. Notice that? It'll take it very, very clean and get rid of all those little speckles from around the edges. And now we're just going to simply click OK. So what we've done now is we've cleaned up this mask. I'm going to grab the black here and I'm just going to quickly go over some of these areas and make sure that I've selected those nicely. And uh, if you get to an area like this and you're wondering if you should select it or not, you hit the RGB here, hide our uh, mask, and we can see what's in those areas. And to me, it looks like those are good areas to keep. So I'm going to go back to the layer now and I'm going to hit the Q key. Now this goes back to our selection again. So what I'm going to do though is I want to copy this to a new layer and start to work on the second side. So right now I know I've just masked out those two sides there. So what I'm going to do, there's a couple of ways I could do this. One is I could convert this background to a layer and add a mask. And the other way is I could copy it to a new layer and then add a mask. So I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to click on there. We're going to convert this now to a layer so we can do transparency. And now we go to apply the mask there. Now, if the mask looks inverted, which is what it's doing here, it's cut out the parts it should have kept, just double click, open up the properties panel, go under mask, and then hit invert. And now you'll notice what we've nicely cleaned out those little edges there. And this is looking, whoops, I didn't mean to tap on there. That's looking pretty good. Now, if you wanted, you could go into the refine edge, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. What we want to do is continue with this. We want to now make some selections on this side and clean up this side. So we're going to go back again. We're going to choose the select. And this time we're going to go back to the color range again. But we don't have to worry about these because we've already done those. So what we want to do now is select here. But sometimes it's hard to see what you're working with. If that's the case, you can actually just go up here and click up there to select our color. Notice that we've selected that now. And we'll bring our fuzziness back down. Hit the little plus and we can grab some of these other colors down here if we like. And notice with the little plus icon, as I'm clicking, I'm adding to that selection there. Now what we want to do is just clean this up with the fuzziness. Now don't worry about all this stuff here, because remember, we could, we've could we already masked this out, so we can quickly clean that up in the channel now. What we're looking for is just the edges around here. And uh, those edges are looking pretty close. In fact, let me bring it back a little bit. Yeah, I'm thinking about there is actually looking pretty good. So um, if you see you've got stuff like this and these are selected, you can turn on localized color clusters. And then what that will do is we'll actually um, constrain that to this area. And we turn the range down. Notice now it kind of constrains it to there. But in this case, we're not going to do that. We're just going to select it and just cut that out. So I'm going to click OK. All right, it's looking pretty good. But it looks like we could still do a little work. So here's a crazy thing with this. We can mix and match selections. So if I want to hold down the uh, click in here, I can add this uh, quick select tool. I'm just going to undo that. 
and uh, do a smaller selection there. So if I wanted to just kind of grab a couple of areas in here, I can combine it with these other tools. See that? So be a little careful though when you're doing that because um, you know you can get really really carried away if you're not careful. The other thing we can do is we can um, hit the option key with this uh, tool here and I'm just going to take these areas away from our selection because I know we don't want to select any of those. So we've kind of minimized it to this little bit here where we can go in now and we can refine this the same way we did before. So we're going to hit the Q for quick mask and right there we can see what's going on. I definitely want to add some more density to here so I'm going to grab my uh, brush here and grab my black brush here because remember the black adds. Now um, do we want to add in here or not? Let's have a look. No, we don't. We definitely want to take that out. So you can see we can do that. Now here's another thing. Turn your opacity off. Make sure that's all the way up. And also make sure your brush is hard for this kind of masking work. Because we just want a good clean mask on here. So there we go. And we can do that. So you can see it's getting very, very close. Let's go in and check that in the channel. But before we do, we'll just click on the channels actually. And there's our quick mask channel right there. So turn that off. And we can see, let's choke this mask, Control L or Command L, to just kind of clean this up a little bit. And let's have a look in the shadows. The shadows are actually looking pretty good. I don't know that I need to close these up any, any, but the highlights have got a few little speckles and stuff in there that need to be cleaned up. So we'll bring that in, click OK. Now at this point here, if you have pressure sensitivity, you can change it to size. Otherwise, just make a very small brush and we could just go in here with the white and just clean this up. Notice I'm able to do this very, very fine selection because I'm touching my pen tablet very, very, very gently to the um, to the tablet because I'm I'm using uh, size set to pen pressure. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna hit the Q key. We're gonna go back again, and uh, it's looking pretty good. So let's go to our layer now. And we've selected these areas and I've grabbed the layer mask. Notice it's blue. If it's not blue, go back from channels. Make sure you select up here, RGB. Make sure everything's on. Select that mask. And notice we've masked out those areas. So all we have to do to hide them now is fill them with black. So right now I've got black as my background color. I'm going to hit the command or control key and then hit backspace. Oops, and that would be delete. Let's make sure I hit the right key here. And that would be delete on the Mac. And I'm going to hit Control D to turn off the selection. And there we go. We've got a pretty good selection in here of all that stuff. If you noticed on here that maybe these are looking a little jagged, we can undo this. Let's go back. Um, we've still got that. So we've got that selection active now. We can combine this with the um, Refine Edge. And to do that, with the selection active, all you need to do is just turn on any selection tool and this will ref force Refine Edge to come up. So you're kind of fooling it into thinking you just made a selection with one of those selection tools. Then we can click on Refine Edge and then, you know, we can look at this on layers. We can look at it on black and white, um, you know, on, on white, on black. You can do all these different things here. Uh, right now, you'll see what I'm actually doing is I'm on the mask. So let me just cancel out of here. And um, if we grab our layer now, we can hit Refine Edge. It'll still work the same, but now we can actually see more of um, you know what's happening here. Oh, actually, let's go there on the layers. Perfect. So on there, you could actually just play around for your radius there and just try and tweak this a little bit, smoothen it a touch, and maybe even go in there with your Refine Edge brush and try and clean that up a little bit. But I'm, I'm not going to do that right now because I just want to just grab a very, very small brush down here and maybe just clean that up. And then just we can output this to a selection. And then we're going to go there. And all we've done was we've just kind of changed our selection a little bit and we just fill that with black again. Control backspace. And notice how that just kind of cleaned that up a little bit. Control D to deselect. And you get the general idea. So there we go. We've been able to mask out this image, which is a very, very difficult image. And, uh, you know, we've got all this transparency on there now, just using that technique there. So uh, that's one of the things I like to do. And I, once again, I like to call that masking impossible images because this was a very, very difficult 
image to do. And I think we got a really good result in very little time using these techniques. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something, or more importantly, I hope you've got a little bit inspired. I really want to kind of share what I've learned over the years with you, and the best way to do that is for you to obviously subscribe so I can share it with you, but also comment in the bottom. Let me know how this is helping you or what you'd like to learn, and then that way we can kind of move along this journey together and, uh, and really start to focus on the things that you want to learn and the things that you want to know. And also, don't forget, check out all the resources at photoshopcafe.com. We've got tons of them. It's a newly redesigned website with um, all kinds of free tutorials. We've got videos. We've got step-by-step -step tutorials. Um, we've got downloads and also an entire library of training. You know, if you want the uh, premium training from a host of authors, um, a lot of them you've probably heard of. So check it out. And uh, until then, I'll see you at the cafe.